afternoon, folks. How are you doing on Facebook? I had no idea that I was coming on here this early, but the Lord gave me a word this morning for men, and it is urgent. I didn't have time to put the title up there, so I'm going to put it on afterwards. So um, I'm going to see if just a few people are on. If not, when you get um, access to this, listen to this. And if you know any men, whether they are your brothers, whether they are brothers because of your relationship in terms of you being related, or they are your brothers in Christ, if you have an uncle, if you have a single father, a married father, a friend who has a spouse, a someone who doesn't, I'm telling you, there is a satanic assignment being released upon men through strange women. God spoke this this morning. I actually was talking to my husband about this, so... Let me just turn on my praise and we're going to jump into this. Okay. I'm going to share with you what the Lord um, gave me. Uh, men, you need to be on alert for the strange women. And there is also something that God wants me to say uh, to wives. And what I want to say to you is that if you're a very religious woman, um, this might offend you. So I guess you're going to have to be offended. But hopefully maybe you'll listen to it and you really ask God, am I really that type of spouse? Because I really need to change some ways so that I can block the enemy from trying to set up my husband simply because he feels like he can get something from somewhere else that he cannot get at home. Okay. The word strange, uh, the adjective is defined as unusual. And before we go on, I want to let you know that there is a strange, which means peculiar. There's a strange and peculiar that is in God, but there is a strange and a peculiar that comes from the underworld. Okay. So it means unusual or surprising in a way that is unsettling or hard to understand, sometimes odd, it's curious, it's funny, it's bizarre, it's weird, it's uncanny. In other words, it's unpredictable and strange on the demonic side actually causes a man to be puzzled about a woman. In other words, she is not predictable. She is so interesting. She presents herself in such a unique way. It kind of uh, triggers his mind to ponder, to think about her, uh, simply because she's so different than the type of women that he's used to um, encountering. Um, the spirit of seduction on women, on strange women in the world, this is what was wrong with Solomon, who had over 700 wives, who actually turned his passion away from God at a certain point in his walk with God and actually caused a division in his kingdom was because Solomon chose the number of wives he did, not God. Solomon did in the Old Testament. And because of that, when Solomon chose some of the women that he did, he chose a large percentage of women that worship a strange God, a strange God. And when he brought them into covenant with him, it began to affect his leadership, his discernment, his ability to really carry out the task of the God of Israel. And it introduced all types of different spirits of seduction, okay? So understand is that the spirit of seduction on the strange woman who does not walk with God is a woman who operates um, controlled by a spirit, but it presents itself with a false presentation of validation for a man. It gives a false sense of compliments. It's like the cheerleader. It's the affirmer. It praises who he is, his manhood, his physicality, his gifts, the way he dresses, how he leads, what he handles, in responsibility, and ultimately his goals. And then there is the sexual pleasure of enticement simply because of the way she carries herself, which is appealing to a man's eyes. You guys remember the video that I did, and this is true, is that men are physical creatures. They're physical by nature. In other words, men are moved by what they see. However, once they get what it is that appeals to their eyes. If it's empty, if it lacks character, if it lacks knowledge, wisdom, training, gifts, it becomes unfulfilling. But what captivates them first is what they see, but they long for something deeper called conversation. And the strange woman who is anointed by Satan, she knows this. She knows that men are intrigued by conversation. What is conversation? It's when two people exchange a level of communication where they connect deep cause unto deep. They relate to one another. They feel like they can express um, what their heart desires are, what their passion is, what they're struggling with. Conversation. 
First Kings 11, one says, King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh who worshiped a pagan god. He loved women from Moab. Remember we talked about Ruth being a product of the Moabitess people, which were an incestuous people. In other words, the whole entire Moabitess land practiced uh, sexual perversion, sex in family systems. And that's the type of women that Solomon brought into his kingdom. Women from Ammon, Edom, and Sidon, as well as the Hittite women. These were women who came from cultures. Um, and religious belief systems that were pagan and not of the God of Israel. Ezra 10.3, when you guys get a chance, I want you to go and study the book of Ezra, turn off empire and turn on Ezra 10.3 because when you look into the history of Ezra, what was taking place with the men of Israel, they were marrying strange women and different demonic things begin to happen in their lives. In Ezra 10.3, it says, so now let us make a covenant before our God to send away all the foreign wives and their children according to the counsel of my Lord and of those who tremble at the command of our God. Let it be done according to the law. So this is my plea to women. Like I said, if you're religious, you're probably going to be turned off and you're going to get offended. It's okay. I hope what I say would actually ignite something in you. Let me tell you something as a woman of God, you are not making love to God. You make love to your man, your husband, which means it is your responsibility as a woman to be sexy for him, to affirm him. If anybody should lay on the bosom of a wife, it is a husband. You are that one individual that he should feel like, if there's anybody that I want to get on the phone, that I want to talk to, it is my wife. It is my wife. You need to step up your game and realize that this devil is not playing. He is after some married men. Why? so that he can cause a family system to be destroyed. He's after some single men, why? So that they don't end up in covenant with women of God, the God that belongs to the same men and not a foreign God. In order for him to cause a hindrance, in order um, to see God's kingdom come to the earth with people that are coming together that worship our God. Because when a strange woman comes, she pulls him away from the God of the Bible, away from the Holy Spirit, away from logos, away from who Jesus Christ is, away from the blood, away from living holy. She pulls them into strange belief systems, strange doctrines of devils. So this is important. As a wife, you need to become what he really needs. If any man should have a wonderful conversation, he should not have a conversation with a coworker, with a sister in Christ, but you can't have that conversation with your spouse. So let's say that you are struggling with understanding who you are. This is what you need to do as a woman is ask God to deliver you, to set you free, to teach you who you are as a woman so that you can get healed in this marriage and be able to express yourself, be able to engage in, um, and you can say rewarding conversations with your spouse. You should be able to laugh with your spouse. It isn't just going to church together. It isn't just praying together. It isn't just reading the word. No, he is a man. He needs to be able to go to the movies with you, go to a restaurant with you. He needs to be able to tickle you in the kitchen. He needs to be able to crack jokes with you, just like he plans destiny with you. He needs to be able to feel free. So we have a responsibility to be the women of God that we are, prayed up in the spirit, covering our men, fighting the forces of darkness, pleading the blood of Jesus, prophesying, doing whatever as we serve. And we, the first place you serve is in your home. I believe that when you are in a home with a man and you are married as a woman, you turn that house into a home with your personality. It should be his oasis to rest. It should not be out of order. It should not be full of filth. It should not have 25 different people running in and out of it, and he's just coming home. No, he is head. He is head for a reason, because it's our protection, not dictatorship, not domineering. No, it is our protection so that we can reach our fullest potential as God's daughters protected by who he is, simply because of the logic that God has given him as a man. They are our kings. So no woman should be able to engage 
in a certain level with your husband the way that you do. The issue is you have to really examine yourself as a woman and ask yourself, okay, if this is going on in your marriage, in your life, whatever, you got to really stop and pause and ask, what is it that they find over there that they don't find in me? Is it that I'm judgmental? Am I negative? Am I not funny? Does he feel like I have no sense of humor? Because you need all of that in a relationship. That's why I said just because people are saved does not mean that you are suitable or compatible with one another. You have to really be able to connect because you become one. You're talking about living. For you who are single, you're talking about living with someone, laying in the beds with someone until death do you part. So you have to connect on many different levels. My husband will tell you this. The first night that my husband, we were just talking about this because it was just deep how God, for some reason, had blinded Anthony from seeing me, but I had saw him, but he didn't see me. And I heard him laugh. We were in Southern California. It is just so deep. It's just one of those situations where you just like, no, hey, this was so set up by God. But my husband always says is that, yes, I thought you were pretty. He said, I thought you were very pretty, but it was something else about you. And what it was, was that Anthony was picking up something hurt me. And as he engaged in conversation, I went deep with him. I went in humor with him because I felt for some strange reason that I could. Me and Anthony stayed up the first night we met you guys. And listen to this. Do you know that me and Anthony were in the same church for eight and a half years? And sometimes when Anthony, you know, would have his car worked on and when he didn't have one and when I didn't have one, do you know that sometimes me and Anthony were on the same transportation and we never saw each other until the appointed time? You know that's God. And you guys know the whole story. I was called to a pastor, a pastor that rejected me, but it was God who raised up Anthony. And I'm telling you, we engage in the deepest conversation about God, about relationships, family. And as we build a friendship, we engaged in everything that you could probably talk about. Even right before we got married, I hear you, Holy Ghost, we talked about sexuality, about what we expect from one another, what you like, what you don't like. See, in religion, in the body of Christ, church didn't talk about certain things. So it left doors open for people to want to go and explore because people were not being transparent in the body of Christ. We have a responsibility as women of God. Yes, we are to carry ourselves with class, with dignity. We are not women of the world. We are not to be dressing um, seductive, acting unbecoming. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you don't have a unique personality that your spouse should experience. Your spouse does not want religion. He wants a relationship, just like in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Men need that. Men need to be able to connect. They need to be able to open up about the deepest things. And here you have these spirits out here on women. And I have to honestly say this, I have never seen so many women in all of my life, they have no conviction, no fear. Don't even care if you destroy a family system. Just because what's inside of you, those demonic spirits, you just want him. And they just don't care. And that's really the type of assignments that this enemy is setting up, is that he's hoping that you too won't communicate. And I'm telling you, some of you need to have, I call it just a, a, a serious round, an honest round at the table and be honest and open up and say, no, I do not like the way you dress. No, I'm not physically attracted the way I once used to be. No, I do not like your attitude. I don't like it. And open up one to another, both genders, and get it out on the table and then say, okay, now that we open up, me and Anthony had a round like that about maybe like five or six months ago, just let it all out. And you know what? And then we held hands and we prayed and then we agreed, okay, I'm going to work on that and you're gonna work on that. Why? Because we love one another and we're in love and we know God is the one who arranged this marriage and it will not be put to shame. And we will not have doors open so that the enemy can come in and attack because that's exactly what's being set up. That's exactly what is happening to many people. There are a few people in the gospel industry, famous, married strange women, walked away from the woman that God anointed for your life because they were captivated by something else. And if you guys pay attention, 
Pay attention to their music ministries. Pay attention to their churches, what happened. It was never the same. You know why? Because you can't abandon the wife, a covenant wife that God called you to, and you just go on and select another, and you just think your ministry is going to be fine. Your gospel name is going to be fine. No, it doesn't work like that because they got outside the will of God. And yes, some will continue on, and yes, they can repent. I'm just saying you don't get to just abandon people just because and God called you to the person and you think somehow, some way that the divine will is just going to be. No, it isn't because they didn't do what God wanted them to do. And yes, I believe that when a person doesn't listen and the other person happened to listen and happens to be a person of God, I believe that there's a certain level of mercy that comes to the spouse that really did try to make it work but the other person didn't. And I believe that God still grants certain things to the other spouse simply because of their obedience, because of their obedience, that they were not the one who erred. It was the other spouse that did. But I'm telling some men, and, and I'm speaking because I want men and women both to hear me because I want some of you wives, fiancés, you need to be alert to a strange spirit coming after your men, coming after your, your soon-to-be husband, your husband's, but you need to know the type of presentation that it comes in. Pay attention to when you're at church and always just this one particular woman kind of finds her way over to your man. But when you come around, she kind of runs away and never ever wants to talk to you. Pay attention, pay attention. And just ask the Lord, Father, is there anything that I need to become. See, this is where women era is quit listening to women tell you, oh, honey, I wouldn't do that. And oh, I wouldn't do that. You know what? You're not in this covenant. So it really doesn't matter what you wouldn't do. What matters is what pleases my spouse? What pleases my spouse? Pay attention, women. When your man tells you, I love the way you wear your hair. I love the way you dress. Let me tell you something about Anthony Dospel. <laughs> Anthony does not like my hair straight. He doesn't. And he made that very clear. I do not like that bone straight, um, flat iron. When you flat iron, I don't like that. And he's made that very clear. And he said, if you want to wear big bouncy curls, I'm fine with that. Or wet, wash, curl. He loves this. And he loves the big bouncy curl. But he does not like the flat iron look. Don't you know I got sense as a, as a woman? First of all, my husband is not ever going to tell me something that does not compliment me. Do I have a free will to wear my hair bone straight? Yes, I do. However, my husband is attracted to curly. He likes my hair curly. You know what? You're darn right. I wear my hair curlier in the summer, bigger curls in the winter. You know why? Because I aim to please my man. That is my husband. And I aim to please him. And if he likes it, you're darn right. I'm a servant of honor because he's my king. Pay attention. Don't be offended. Pay attention. This is your covenant spouse, vice versa. Even with a man, when you tell your husband, I like this, he has the same responsibility. However, this word is for our men, that the enemy is comprising strange women to come along their path. And we need to be prayed up about it. But we also need to be wise women of God to say, you know what? I give my husband no reason to look anywhere. When he comes home, I, I cheerlead as soon as he comes to the door. Anthony will tell you this. As soon as he unlocks the door, I say, hi, King Anthony. And I run up to him and I kiss him all over his face because I want him to know that there is affection in your wife. I'm not just a prophetess, a CEO, a writer. I am a wife. I am a wife. And I have a responsibility to please my man in the bed and out the bed. And some of you need to stop being born in the bedroom. That is your husband that you are making love to. You are not making love to God. You are making love to your husband. Why do you not have romantic music playing that both of you love? Express yourself. Be free with your spouse. Be free with him. And this is what we have not seen in the body of Christ. We've seen it more in the last past, maybe seven or 10 years. But before, the way Christian marriages were looking is just everybody's just looking stoic. They go to church. Me and Anthony were cracking up because we were talking about, we've seen couples like 15 years ago, 
And we were looking at them like, you know what? If that's what marriage looks like, I don't want that. They look like they can't stand each other at church. They don't laugh. They don't smile. You just come get in the car. Don't say nothing. Don't nobody want to lay next to that. I'd rather be by myself. Me and Anthony were talking about this because the image of Christian marriages, it just made it look like, okay, we're saved. You speak in tongues, we pray. But it's like people don't have individuality or a personality, which could not be further from the truth than what scripture says. Oh God, be free. Scripture teaches you to be free with your spouse. The bed is undefiled. Make love to your husband. Aim to please him. Aim to be that woman that when you open up your mouth, he doesn't even want to stop talking to you. Let Just treat him in such a way that everything that is in him that he's even struggling with, that the very first woman that he thinks about calling, it's you. And it should be you. You are the covenant wife, honored by God, chosen by God to walk with this man, to build God's destiny and raise little destinies of children if there are children in your marriage. So that's just what the Lord gave me. And I was like, ooh, Papa, okay. I was like, I'm just gonna write it up there because he gave me another word. And I thought, oh, do I have your permission to just write this one? He said, no, you're gonna go online and you're gonna tell them what I said about strange women, that the enemy is comprising strange women to come after some married men and some singles. And why do they come? Because they have an agenda from Satan to destroy a man's destiny, destroy his body, have him waste his time, his ability to grow, to have discernment, so that he never ever connects and births what he was born to do as a man. That is the agenda. That was the agenda of Delilah. Delilah's name in Hebrew means amorous, delight, languishing, and temptress. Go and study this. Delilah was a high class um, call girl for the military leader. She was, go and study it. Go and study the history. That was her assignment. And she was put on assignment for Samson. And Samson was intrigued. And if you study, you will find out that Samson actually had a relationship with a foreign girl before her. But it was Delilah who broke the ice to be able to really seduce him to the point that he would reveal his strength. And in the end, it cost him his life. I hate when people tell the story of Samson and they always say, oh, you know, the 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 the, the final end is that God displays his glory. Yes, that's true, but the sad part of Samson is, is that we will never know what he could have become because he ends up dying because of one decision that he makes with a strange woman. Oh, me and Anthony were watching a story. I'm telling you guys, this is so serious, of a black chef, I think he was out of Detroit. He was scheduled to be at some big time wedding. So he decides to make a detour why? To go and see a prostitute to get a sex job done. And guess what? They got into an argument over the fee he was supposed to pay. And I guess her pimp came out. Guess what? They shot him and then threw his body in a trash can and stuffed it in the garage. Do you guys remember on my page? I shared that story of that successful black businessman who was out driving in his Bentley and he wanted to have some sex with some strange women, not his wife. And it shows him on the camera with three uh, prostitutes and he takes them back to him and his wife's second house and they do what they do. And in the morning, guess what? They let the robbers in and they shoot him and he steps into eternity. Why? The decision to entertain strange women, not the women of your covenant, not women of God. So if you have brothers, if you have uncles, if you have a pastor, whatever, I want you to pray against them being enticed by the spirit of a strange woman. Pray for your husbands, but be alert and be discerning and become everything that they need, which shuts the door. And one of the areas that Satan gets defeated is actually through communication between a spouse. This is why Satan doesn't want Christian couples to open up and communicate. Because see, when you open up and communicate, it exposes everything. And then you can confront it and deal with it and shut the door to the devil. But when you hold everything in, everything just festers in the atmosphere. The enemy starts working on your mind, your thoughts. And then with your thoughts comes actions. And actions produce an outcome. And sometimes the outcome can be deadly, depending upon where you ended up and with who. Okay? So I got to go, you guys. I love you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay discerning. Be blessed. Bye-bye.